Yeah, now it's all right. I had to push my button twice. I'm telling hey, you. somebody's got to push. I just don't button. have the strength to push the <laughs> digital button on my computer. <laughs> the digital buttons of reality. Quick time audio <laughs> recording. Engaged. Commander Cody in the digital buttons. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, everybody is dancing now. Everybody that can. Everybody that can, yeah. <laughs> Which means I'm not. I'm ready. I wonder what I was saying. <laughs> uh, good. Okay. Pull yourself together, Robert Strong. Good luck. And pull yourself together, Richard Bullock. I shall, Mr. All Bullock. Right. Hey, good morning. Good morning, Richard. Hey, uh, you folks are uh, tuning in to Radio Science News. Uh, this episode is being recorded on December 11th, dun, dun, dun. 2021. For some reason, that still sounds like I'm talking into the future or something. Yeah. And yet, in a few days, it's going to be 2022, and then I'm going to be really confused. And actually, in a few seconds, it's going to be the future, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, and a few a, 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 a seconds ago, it was the past. It's yeah. like the Groundhog Day. Of Groundhog this. Day. Blink and, and uh, it's a new one. Hey, uh, you're listening to Radio Science News, episode number 816 in a series. Uh, as you prime number fans know out there, any number that ends in a six is not a prime number. Wow. It has at least the factors of two and three. But least. this, 816, has the factors of two and two and two. And two and three and seventeen, yeah. and I also want to say if you're from the planet Mercury, <laughs> Mercury. Mercury, I'm crazy about a Mercury. That's a great. Story. It is the 65th anniversary <gasps> of Radio Science on News Mer- on Mercury. On Mercury. I mean, we're, that mean we qualify, qualify for Medicare on yes, uh, on Mercury. yes, 65. That's great. Social uh, Social Security so kicks security in. Kick in a kick, a kicks in and everything. So, you know. Well, you need it on Mercury. You, know? you certainly do. A lot of people go to Phoenix, Arizona for the dry heat, but I'm thinking but Mercury. It's a would... lot drier heat there, yeah. <laughs> and, and a lot heatier, too. It's just uh, <laughs> well, corn and, and... Wait, um, it, it used to be that we thought that one side of Mercury always faced the sun. And then we found out, due to more science and more observations, nice. that actually Mercury rotates on its axis. Yeah. And uh, it turns out that when the Earth was closest to Mercury, was when. Uh, uh, essentially the same side of Mercury always faced the Earth. Yeah. But it did seem to to hey, to, to rotate around. I love that idea so, of, of getting new information. I and, love yeah. learning new things. In fact, that's what Radio Science News is all about. It is. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to get you folks started. And uh, um, if you're driving one of those self-driving cars, good for you. I'm glad that you can afford that. Um, make sure that... Uh, a, Everything is in, in engaged properly so that you can participate in Radio Science News. If not, then pull over if you're driving so that you can fully engage in Radio Science News. Um, because we're we're going to go over a lot of really There's good a lot. Stuff I have way too much stuff, as you know, Robert. As you always do. Because and you know what? You want to give us more than we deserve. Well, there is that. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, we many times any individual topic that we have on here could take up could go on and much on more on. time, and we try yeah. to warn people that we put the links up, and oftentimes we might not even get to the topic, and you can right. go visit it on your own. It's just for you to try to go in and find out some. And new sometimes stuff. we carry them over from one week to the sure. next. Uh, and the biggest thing is to get them because Robert, I just watched. Uh, Jeff Bezos and his uh, I did too. latest mission just before yep. I jumped into to my car and came down here and uh, very impressive. But but the launch pad of science is the best we can Speaking do. Speaking of the launch pad of science, um, I am I'm going to get you to that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through another portal. Ooh. If you go, ooh, I know through another portal. Oh, Stargate. <laughs> <laughs> if uh, if you go to www.smartcenter.org, uh, that takes you to my favorite web page on the internet, yeah. which is the Smart Center page. Um, uh, uh, Richard and Libby and I work with the Smart Center. We do all kinds of outreach and summer science camps and teacher workshops and all kinds of fun stuff. And then a projection of that is the store, the science store here in beautiful downtown rain-soaked wheeling nice. this morning yeah it uh, it's it's it looks like the rain's letting up but boy it was pouring last night it was. um so 
Uh, we're in smart center market with an RE as opposed to smart center, which is an ER. Um, so to get to that, just uh, type into your, your web browser, whichever that happens to be, uh, www.smartcenter.org, and up pops the Smart Center webpage. Now, what's really nice about this is that it is a direct link uh, to all kinds of interesting, fun stuff, but it's also a nice link to Radio Science News. And if you look above the little trifecta rainbow t-shirt images there, uh, you'll see the link to Radio Science News. And what's fun about Radio Science News for me, and I'm sure it's oh, as, as fun for our listeners, is that I have not seen what these topics are. I might have... <coughs> Have have seen them in in, in just my, yeah. my general browsing, and occasionally but, you have seen it and sure. sent it to me. So that and works I might have too. seen it and sent it to you. But this is my first approach, and so what? As we've mentioned before, what you're doing is you're listening in to two guys talking about science, and hopefully it's an interesting conversation. And so we don't pre-record this. We don't, <laughs> you know, do all that stuff. This is we don't live. Rehe- do we rehearse? We oh, uh, I rehearse. We did. <laughs> I, I can't even spell rehearse. No, that's right. So what 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 we do is it's just live. We have fun. There's mistakes. There's errors, and it's just the the fun of doing. It. So this is December eleventh, two thousand and twenty one. We've got infant COVID. Infant COVID. Some news on why infants actually. Uh, in some ways, this was distorted, but infants actually do have some amazing resistance to COVID, and we'll we'll Isn't talk that about that. Uh, Ooh, nasal, nasal vaccine. Nasal vaccine. Gee, wouldn't that have been an easy thing? Put, yeah, that up your nose. Uh, six quarks. You're going to think, was well, oh, this, this a new band from England or something? No, no, no. no, no it's so, one of those Korean boy bands. Oh, six I love the six quarks. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. What? <laughs> this is uh, this is something that now, of course, Robert, being such such a person of physics. Oh, uh, I you, am. You're you're familiar with baryons and and three quark things and but and then, the flavors and the oh, colors and oh yeah. So, but mm-hmm. we're going to talk about that. And speaking of flavors, grape, grape seed. <laughs> Uh, and the stories, Smooth transition. The stories that we have not gotten to, these medical ones, grapeseed, okay. TT10, C, difficile. Difficile. And the thing about transplants. Oh, I <clears throat> was thinking that that said transplant parent, but I Trans- have, well. have something on my glasses. Well, there is that. So okay. those stories, have, I, I keep putting those as if we may eventually <clears throat> get to them. But okay. The big story that I, I, I do know that we want to get into, and, and maybe we should jump into it and see how much time we end up. This last section, in some ways, and I'm still processing it because I, I have mixed feelings about uh, what was the December 9th ECAT demo. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and <clears throat> what I'm doing is I'm kind of letting it sort of, I'm, I'm ruminating on it. You know, like you were, ruminating comes from the, uh, the when you see a thing. cow out in the field and he's sort of like chewing and thinking about <laughs> and, and rumen comes from the fact that he puts stuff in. The, yeah, anyway, the idea is that you take some time to absorb process yes. and then yes. maybe revisit. <clears throat> and that's kind of, I think we're going to be doing that for a while. I, uh, I, I, uh, <clears throat> I just want to say that Richard and I have a <clears throat> fabulous program today at uh, between noon and 1 p.m. over at the center market area. We are going to be with the Wheeling Symphony. And so to prepare for that, Richard came over to the (laughs) Smart Center Market early on December 9th, and we actually watched this. We watched the uh, the demo, the live stream demo that where where Robert uh, uh, Rossi was actually going to present, he, and he did it personally. There's a bunch of things about the whole presentation that lead me to think different ways. But uh, what we'll do is we'll we're going to look at the uh, there's a link to the December 9th ECAT demo, mm-hmm. which will allow Good. you to actually watch the whole thing, watch and listen mm-hmm. to the whole thing, which is not that long. No, it's, it's about actually a, extremely short. And it's even interesting because in some ways it's almost kind of like it almost, it almost reminds me of like a waiter who brings out the food and says, "This is the food." You may eat it, or I don't. You know, he he, he was Whatever a little. Whatever you want to do with it. He was a little. I don't want to say uh, not short. No, uh-uh. but but very no wasted time kind of right. thing. Because and I think part of it there, there are reasons why that may be. There was also a particular what they call a fact. You know, FAQ. They always talk about a fact. There's a sheet that they put up that has a long list of sort of things that you kind of need to know that yeah. the staff will put mm-hmm. together because a lot of times people will ask Rossi a question well what was the coefficient of performance on the thing meaning how much power in how much out and he'll say go watch the video yeah. you know like mm-hmm. and you're thinking hey you could just tell him no I, I appreciate he's going look 
I've been working on this for 10 years. It's the most amazing thing. You like it or you don't. You'll right. see, we'll see where it goes. Watch the uh, film. Then there was a thing where there were questions and answers. Uh, one of the things that Robert and I did have concern about when we actually went to see the, it was, it was scheduled for 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it was, it was from their facilities uh, near Miami. Uh, and, it, you know, oh, man, it was delayed, and or it was jammed. And it, it turns out that they really do uh, s- state that they were there were issues of people hacking and trying to, you know, cut the feed. That's and, so sad. <clears throat> well, but, in, you know, it's another one of those things that you go, well, why would somebody do that? Or why, did somebody do it? Or you Why know, would somebody do that <coughs> if this weren't <coughs> Exxon. real? Exxon. Oh, Exxon? No, just kidding. I, I believe that you were lot. saying Exxon, but I couldn't hear you because you were coughing. It wasn't quite. I was just, <laughs> just clearing my mind there for a second. So anyway, like, for example, the questions and answers, we, we were thinking it was going to be you could post questions and mm-hmm. there would be a real time. They, they kind of had to do – I mean, part of it is that they're working on something. I mean, it reminds me a little bit of the scenes from the – the, the the series of uh, Star Trek things where you know, you co- go back and the guy is inventing hyperdrive and you know and it's like you're thinking it's like a garage operation and mm-hmm. he knows what he's doing and uh, <clears throat> there's some interesting things about that now, then I actually put a couple of uh, one quick link from Engineer 48 who's a guy who there Rossi has a blog that he responds to and that you can send things to and which you know, is awesome uh, and the chart that we put up is the Ragone chart. And every or time, and I, I have been look, uh, looking at this now for years. And yeah. Every time I see it, my jaw still drops. Well, and we we probably in some ways need to revisit it yeah. again after having seen the dip. But again, part of what I want to say is, let's kind of ease into this whole thing. Yeah. I'll tell you what. For what we we'll start by just going to the. Uh, we'll get to some of the other maybe stories, but I'm going to click on the one that says December 9th ECAT demo. Okay. And uh, this takes you to the page that, uh, here we go, ECAD slash December 9th event. It says, welcome. And then it's, it says, today on December 9th, 2021, we proudly present the ECAT SKLED. As you can see, it has LED in it. So in the uh, for folks who are not familiar or haven't been following this, and I, I don't blame you for not knowing about this, right. uh, Andre Rossi's ECAT, which originally was kind of dubbed as the Energy Catalyzer. Catalyzer. Uh, it went through several iterations, and the SK stands for Sven Kulander, who was a, a scientist that was a, a mentor and, and someone that, who contributed a lot to what he was doing. So this one is the SK, it's the LED, uh, it's a, and then they, they claim it's the most energy efficient lamp ever made, and from the, you know, from the specs, and we accept them as offered, it certainly is. And then it talks about the thing that was actually a big surprise for many people. The, there were some slight delays in this December presentation, and it, it appears that part of it was uh, both of these things are, uh, uh, they have certification. You know, like mm-hmm. we have in the United States, we have UL certification. Right. The EU has what they call CE certification, European, you know, like a CE certification. Okay. And the point is, both of these are real products that when they are manufactured after you know a pre-order period that they're already approved and ready to go and the the ecat skl which has an ep at the end stands for electrical production so it says basically a clean compact and fossil free power source providing electric power continuously for 100,000 hours please watch the presentation video below and robert and i weren't sh- initially weren't sure we were talking about the one 100,000 hours. You were telling me how many years that is. Do you want a quick, or I don't know. You, you, yes, I will. We were just kind of estimate. Because a lot of people will, uh, like LEDs are just remarkable because they'll typically say they're good for 50,000 hours. And some of them actually will claim to be 100,000 hours. Right. Like the, the, but it's a lot of time. And you're thinking, so something runs continuously. Like if I, if I light up my barbecue and... That gives you... S- Six years. So we're in the, like the six-year time frame. Right now, <laughs> continually operating. Yeah, and for six years. And, and one of the things that again, this a lot of this stuff is going to be foreign to people, or they're going to say, "What are you guys talking about?" Uh, it's a it's a very complex kind of issue. This thing probably all started way back when Fleshman and Pons first talked about cold fusion. And then they got obliterated by other scientists because 
like, supposedly things couldn't be replicated, even though we now know from history that not only was NASA, but the U.S. Navy, a lot of people were doing things. I'm sorry. I think that my math was wrong. I must have pushed a wrong key. There you I, go. Am, I, I am going to do this well, again. That, they, that the did ejection not seat didn't feel, take. That did not feel correct when I did it before because I was thinking that was about 11 years and I got some somewhere around six so when I redid it, I got 11.4 years. Okay, so we'll just call okay. 11 and a half years. I was thinking years. that seemed off. I must, <clears throat> I must have uh, 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 hit, hit something else there. Now, okay. the reason, the reason why you. this becomes even more interesting is the, uh, uh, and, and Robert, when we look at the, the fact sheet, we'll talk about it more. But anyway, on this page, I just want you to know that you can, you can click and begin the thing. I'll click just a second. Of, Andre Rossi had some throat issues that he's recovered from, but... It's a little difficult because he has a very uh, Welcome to this presentation of ECAT technology. The we'll just ECAT listen to a few is minutes. A new okay. energy technology developed by Leonardo Corporation. It is a safe, clean technology which is far more economical than any other energy technology in the marketplace. It produces no carbon emissions or any other form of pollution. Today, Andrea Rossi, CEO of Leonardo Corporation and the inventor of the ECAT will demonstrate two ECAT products. All right, so he's gonna start out. Uh, I, I'm actually, the thing is it's a long thing, so I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna hope that if this is of big interest to you, as it, it very well may be, Part of it is it's going to it's time is going to tell. Yes. Because there are a lot of complicated yes, things going on here. Okay, I'm going to go back to you can actually go to the fact sheet from here, but I'm going to go back to the launch pad of science and I'm now going to go to the FAQ ECAT. Okay. <clears throat> now because there are some things that I was surprised at. Somebody emailed me and said, "Well, I was watching it, but I I'm, you're going to have to explain it to me." And I said, "Well, certainly." <clears throat> We'll talk about it, but this the, express, the explanation and all this will have to evolve because <clears throat> there are a bunch of things that, some things are not totally clear, but a lot of things are just surprising. Yeah. Uh, if you go to the, uh, the fact for the ECAT, the first thing that, that surprised me was, as I said, this began way back when people were looking at what they would call excess heat or above right. <clears throat> unit energy. Yeah. Now, just, uh, just for a reference point, I, as I mentioned to my friend who said, well, could you tell me one of the reasons why this is important? And I said, well, you know, this is a guy who's come up with something that is, is demonstrably producing uh, energy in excess of, and in the case of, we're going to be talking about the electric production, the ECAT, SKL, the SKLEP, you basically put in one watt of energy right to get the thing started right exactly <clears throat> and what you're getting is a continuous hundred watts of electricity out for 100 th th a, th a thousand hours for well <laughs> so that's there so first there are a couple of things about that that I wasn't clear about at first because mm -hmm. I thought okay so you could say Robert that you put in one watt of, elect of okay. electrical energy and even the, with the fact that there's some heat dissipation and some control, you get 100 watts out. So effectively, if you were talking about an energy device, especially in this sort of new realm of uh, what would be considered exotic things that people may or may not even believe in right now, right. Uh, the, the coefficient of, of production, not power, but the production would be 100 one in, times. Yeah, it would be a COP of 100. Right. Okay. Now, the part that I didn't understand until I read through, I've, I've been looking through some of these things, and there are some, we'll see it on the question thing. The thing that's interesting, Robert, is if you turn on your ECAT, so like, you know, you're, whatever you're doing with your ECAT, well, you're either powering your, uh, maybe you have a tasty bake oven, and you have a oh, hundred watt light bulb, and, now you wanna, we're talking. and you're thinking, I'm going to cook my Christmas cookies in my, <laughs> but I'm going to run it with my ECAT. Right. And at first it doesn't seem like, well, that's, you know, that's, that's some heat and that's some light, but there's a hundred watts, watts of energy. Okay. Here's the thing. If you were, as as I understand, and I think this is actually clear, once you start the ECAT up, you started it up with your little one watt right. power, and you can use that in any source, like a they talk about a twelve volt battery. Right. Uh, it, it goes in. It, it then goes into self sustaining mode. Right. Which means that you are now. I know you're a heck of a mathematician, Robert, and this is going to be a tough <laughs> one for you because. <laughs> 
if you now have a device, and I'm picturing you at the blackboard at, uh, you know. There I am. And Mrs. Wildman's class in third grade when I would be finding out about fractions or whatever. And, I, and, and so at the top, you have 100 watts. Right. And at the bottom, if you start it with one, you can say, well, the answer is, you know, 100. 100. But if I, if I tell you that now, after you, you finish your first batch of tasty bake oven cookies. No. Oh. And, you, and it turns out that the thing is what they call self-sustaining mode. It is actually powering itself with no further input. Right. <clears throat> so if, if, you have, if you have the 100 on top and, the divide, divis, and then you put a zero on the bottom, we're in trouble, right? Yes, because, <coughs> uh, because <clears throat> most mathematicians at, the, 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 at this point would it begin to sort of they would bluster blur. and say yes. the hell you say yes that's, they, or something they like would that. say no 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 what no, the? That they say what the that that, uh, that can't can't okay. be true but 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 what's happening is you're releasing some kind of a reaction not a chemical reaction no. not a nuclear reaction but closer to a nuclear than a, 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 a chemical you've engaged the process and it's we've beginning. engaged yeah. something yeah. that suddenly outputs for the next 100,000 hours, essentially 100 watts of, um, of, uh, of, uh, of um, uh, energy. Now, what I, as most science people want to know is, where is this coming from? Well, and that's, that, that gets yeah. complicated. There's also, uh, I mean, one of the things is they have, they have published a, uh, uh, you know, a very extensive theoretical basis for what they're doing, and it's on research. We've, we've linked it before, and we may talk about that before. But it's very deep in the weeds on physics right. and Dirac equations. And the thing that uh, I think jumped out at me as the most surprising thing was, as I said, we, we first looked into this when people understood that there were over-unity processes, yes. according to Fleshman and Pons. M -m 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 meaning <clears throat> that, that, that you're getting more out of it yeah, than the, you're putting into it. And, and over unity like, just means that if I put one unit in and I get 1%, if I get 101%, like just right. like that's over unity, and that yes, would freak is. people out. And and one of the contrasting issues is if you're familiar with like the ITER, the processes where people are trying to confine with huge magnetic fields, that's, you know, to create a, a fusion process, they have not, they have not yet achieved even Unity plus a fraction no. at this point, no, and they're and they're doing it. They're not. doing it with enormous amounts of energy yes. input. Like it takes the whole the whole city will have to shut down for a while. While we well, divert. and 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 not just that, but and it's, it's so instantaneous. But it is this huge, gigantic thing. Yeah, oh, it's it's that me. that 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 needs to be run and maintained by hundreds, if not th a, th a thousands of people. Yeah. And it costs billions to produce, and it gets nowhere close to anything. <clears throat> yeah, and it's yeah. all in one place, and you'd have to. Okay, so yeah. it's so blah blah blah. I know. There's so much about this, but I, what I was going to say is the thing that surprised me most was we initially thought, okay, there's something going on with uh, flesh and pawns, and there's they, there's some reaction with the alkali metals. In this case, I think they were using palladium, and yeah. they had deut they had deuteron. They had like. They did. They had high level stuff. Rossi basically came out and was doing <clears throat> what he can. What he was saying that he was per, he was creating just excess heat, but he was using just straight plain hydrogen, mm -hmm. and he was using nickel, which is right. one of the related metals. And his whole point was in the nickel lattice structure, things happen, and you you excite it a something certain way. Is, <clears throat> something is occurring, and you're getting an excess amount of uh, heat right. out. And then later, as things went along, part of what made a lot of sense, especially as Robert and I were looking at it, when they mentioned that they were using lithium, mm -hmm. uh, I think they were using lithium-6 or lithium-7. Heaven. They had an isotope of lithium, yeah. which in their process, it, we came to understand, oh, it goes from lithium-7 to beryllium-6. Eight. Beryllium-8, yes, it was going. So, there, so we're basically going, okay, in their process, this lithium as an isotope is in its in its isotopic change gets transmuted to an unstable to a very unstable beryllium beryllium eight and and people go well that's kind of far-fetched except no it isn't it's literally the basis for the 1950s uh nobel prize yes. award for the people who understood they called it splitting the atom because what they were doing is they were whacking neutrons or, or protons at uh, uh at the uh, the lithium and <clears throat> then they were saying <clears throat> uh, 
it started a chain reaction because alpha particles were coming. These right. two, but what was really happening was they were, in some cases, they were ignoring the fact that there was the intermediate step. Yes. <clears throat> and that intermediate step made perfect sense. Robert and I were saying, well, we're not looking at anything that's just super weird or complex. No, no. We, <clears throat> it's an isotopic change. It's energy. an isotopic and, change. And we yep. actually, I actually proposed it to, in an email to, to uh, Rossi. I said, maybe you should call this ice. Kind of like people try to say cold fusion. Well, it's not cold fusion, but it could be called isotopic change energy. And he said, eh, maybe it might, that might be an idea. <clears throat> the point being... I kind of thought that's where we were until when you start looking at the uh, the theoretical basis for it, he touches on what he calls long-range particle interactions. Right. Now, when you say, you and I say long-range, I'm thinking Robert's at one end of the football field, and I'm at the other, and we're, <laughs> you know, we're like make, shaking a, 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 you've got a slinky, and you've got your waves. Well, not in quite room. that long. Uh, he's really talking about what he called the picometric scale. Yeah. So Pico, when you're thinking about down into the internal workings, back where, down where those quarks are and everything, Robert, when you're thinking about picometric, that is a long range. That's long range down in there. In there. Yeah. <clears throat> but the part that I'm, I'm finally getting to what's surprising, it says, why have we not previously heard of research on zero point energy and the ECAT technology? And I was thinking, wait a minute. He has now evolved to where he feels that everybody who else who is pursuing what the low energy nuclear reaction, the lattice assisted nuclear reactions, and those everybody's would include the Naval Research Laboratory, the NASA Glenn Center. Yep. There's uh, a there's, there's a bunch of people. Yeah. Uh, there's a, lots there's of, even lots a of. patent by the folks that, that that you know the Google folks there's, mm -hmm. and the University of Virginia. They're all pursuing the so-called low energy nuclear reaction, <clears throat> which would be something happening in the metal lattice structure that like forces the uh, you know the components to be you know, like jammed into a corner right. and then things can happen. He's kind of dismissed that and he says here, reporting on technology development occurring at the border of established physics requires several qualities: solid scientific training, great openness, true humility, and high courage. The audience you can target at an early stage might also be limited and makes spreading the awareness of technology such as the ECAT challenging. In addition to this, the inventor initially believed that the effect had its origin in so-called low energy nuclear reactions with a series of three, but it, with a series of theoretical issues. It took him years of, of experiments and studies, most of them collected in the bibliography of his paper. And I'm going to say this is what you need to click on, which takes you to his long range particle mm -hmm. interactions. Thing until he could understand that the concept of zero-point energy would resolve all of the theoretical issues raised by the LENR. So <clears throat> that's what, I mean, this is from the fact sheet. It goes... Now, I, I, uh, as, a, uh, as a, a physics and science guy, right. I, I, I just want to say um, that my understanding of what people call z a zero-point... Um, Energy. Yeah, it's it's a catch-all for a lot of it, different uh, perspectives. Every, every <clears throat> person that wants you to think that they know what they are saying uses the, the, his term. Right. And so it's a shame. It's an absolute shame that we are using this term because every w w a wacko out there yeah. is saying, "Oh, well, it must be <laughs> due to zero point um, energy." Yeah. Because they don't know what to say and they don't know what they are saying. That's right. It, for, it and so it's a cry and shame that 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 something that 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 is probably valid yeah. is being called this. Well, and, and in in Rossi's case, he has basically it is he has referred to uh, things that uh, Tesla, mm -hmm. Nikol, Nikolai right. Tesla. Uh, purported way back when and you know the idea of I mean, there's a lot of complicated things about resonance and, and it, when we were talking about the other day you were saying the idea that maybe you have it's like in some way you have a mechanism that 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 resonates or, or is an antenna for that yeah. energy that's out there part of what's going on in his research gate thing and at some point we, it would be good to to sit down and just go over yeah. point by point but one of the things that they point out is that uh, within Dirac and a bunch of people who have who've looked at different things, there is the understanding that the electron has a motion to it. Yes. And it may be at the speed of light, and it's a very small motion. But again, there's the concept that, hey, guys, this is just out there all the time. 
It's just like if somebody goes, well, how could you, uh, how could Columbus go from uh, Europe to America? Well, it turns out that there were these trade winds. They go this way, they, they go that always, way. Yes. They're yeah. always there. And, you know, kind of like if you just put your sail out into the trade winds, you didn't, would. you didn't develop them. It just takes you along. Right. Or if you're, if you're, if you're a fan a of hydroelectric point. power and you have, oh, I've got a magnetic, I mean, here's a magnetic field and a rotating wire. And, and uh, the guy says, well, listen, why don't you put this wheel on it and we'll push it up under the waterfall. So the very little bit of energy that you use to push it up under the waterfall, or maybe you even just had it all set up and you said, hey, let's open up this gate. We're instead of grinding grain today, why don't we run this and let the, the wheel turn our right. generator and see right. what happens? Uh, <clears throat> some people would say, well, well, this is crazy. You you now started a process, assuming as an, al an analogy to what we're talking about here, right. assuming that by simply telling your assistant to go, hey, yeah, get, open up the, the gate, you know, for the, the run of the the uh, grinding stone thing and just have it run down here and let it flow over my uh, my little water wheel and turn my generator. And the guy goes, yeah, okay, no big deal. And he just opens it up with like almost no effort at all. And the thing runs for the next hundred years and produces a hundred watts of electricity an hour. Every hour. So, I'm, right. so the, the point is it's in looking the same at- same ideas. Yeah, it, yeah, you have to look at some of these things. And, yeah. and I don't, we're not gonna, we're not gonna, you know, we're not going to claim, okay, guys, this is all, you have to believe this. We're really looking at this from a practical standpoint. And that's where it goes. Well, for example, the first thing that they did was they created the S, the ECAT SKLED. And there's a whole bunch of things you can click on. Where can I use the lamp? Uh, how much light is, a, is, a, is 10,000 lumens? And, you know, it, it, it gives you all this. If you go through, it gives you a sense of how much that is. Is the lamp dimmable? It turns out you can actually dim it to the point where it actually turns from zero to 10,000 lumens. Wow, that is really <clears throat> awesome. And the thing is, uh, the, the, the control will, you know, it all works. And, and then it says, how much is four watts? Well, that's the power consumption. And, you know, it gives you a whole bunch of, and again, here's the thing. This particular thing takes four watts, but it gives you what is equivalent to like 100 watts of LED, you know, compared to uh, what it takes to run a comparable lumen producing device yeah. with a standard thing. Uh, it, there's just so much, all these questions are here, and it, but the thing that is interesting, can I pre-order the lamp now? Yes, you can pre-order it. And it says you can pre-order, and there's a thing to pre-order. Uh, a lot of people who've talked about folks like Rossi who were uh, purporting, say, new devices or things like that well it's a ripoff you're going to send him your money you don't send him any money there's no he's not unlike iter which is asking for billions of dollars from france and the united states and oh, yeah. germany and the people that and we're talking about the amount of money is just astonishing the whole point about this is you can go ahead and pre-order and partly because he wants to get a million of them pre-ordered so that it you know when their production starts then you can pay for it at the time it's deliverable, and that's I mean, that's kind of it. Uh, anyway, this is this is something you're going to want to go through and look at. Uh, you know, it talks about practical uses, and, and t the other, just for your perspective, if you want to know what like a ten thousand lumen light is, you could probably go to. Uh, I'm thinking like go to the your local car dealer. And see the kind of brilliant yeah. lights they're shining, mm -hmm. you know, or a football. Those are those are the things. Stadium lights. A, a ten thousand lumens is a bright light. That is a lot. And it's also a directed, like thirty degree angle cone of bright light. Anyway, I, I, all these things are here. Where, where do I, when do I have to pay? When can I get it? And, and it, you know, can I change my mind? Let me, let me see if I can change my mind. Yes, you can change your mind anytime. Send me an email. Cancel your order. So if you want to, you can go and order. You know, a hundred of these are lights and and then uh when he, they turn out and say hey we're ready for your order you can just change your mind so uh there's all there's all this stuff down here and uh questions planning and strategy cost of production uh anyway there's there's all the all the questions that that uh i was thinking it was on this sheet there's some place where somebody was talking about how you know can you use this as a mobile thing you know the point being mm -hmm. well since you only need uh, one watt to start even if you just had say you're going to start up one or you had a bank of maybe 10 of the skleps because you weren't a thousand watts of power to which would be a you know typical amount to run a lot of things uh you just need a battery or something to start it and at one point one of the things i did find interesting about some of the back and forth here he suggested that that the tesla battery worked best 
<laughs> he Isn't said that. that interesting? I just put that as an aside. So oh, that's fascinating. The as test, though that he's already done I that know. test. Well, and they've already talked about the fact. That, and, and if you thought that it would be interesting to be able to turn on your your uh, porch light for uh, what was it, eleven point four something yep. years, uh, they no, also they no, also the, point out that instead of if you had a typical electric car. Three or four, or maybe say you had a big Tesla pickup truck, I don't know, mm -hmm. three or four or five would, would actually run your car. For 11.4 years without ever doing anything. Yeah, so it could be going nonstop. It could be. You could become a, you could become a pizza delivery man on, uh, for 11.4 years and never... <laughs> well, do stop at the restroom occasionally. That would be the only thing I would suggest. So, Good morning. So that, that part of it was just fascinating. Now, I'm going to go... Just touch on, I'm just going to touch on the question and answer, and that may have been where the question was. If you were listening to the presentation, you could in real time submit them, and you still can. In fact, uh, I'm noticing there actually are some new things, like why is, does it have a reactor inside? Is it, is it similar to your former SKL? It just has all kinds of, like I said, and there are going to be more questions oh, yeah. and the answers coming up. And if you want to see those, it shows you, it says... Uh, you can use this form, and then here, this is the, all the questions. And, and as I looked at it, I, I keep seeing <clears throat> this is probably where the Tesla question was. Yeah. Oh, you can also order it for AC or DC. That means you can start it with AC or have AC wow, or DC come out. That's really cool. Uh, can it be changed? Yes. Uh, if you want to, if you ordered one way and you want to change it, it says here, send it to e, send it to info. I mean, there's <clears throat> all the stuff about the nuts and bolts of, of yeah, working this, this out. This, this, this is really <clears throat> interesting. So you can do, do you, you, you S Hertz, you can do your, 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 a European Hertz. Uh, yeah. Okay, so. And it tells you what's included. These guys have gone through the whole, <clears throat> wow. Okay, that's impressive that somebody's decided, okay, this is not just going to be an American thing it's going to be a worldwide oh no i think i think they actually feel that it'll be more of an eu thing initially because yeah. there's going to be less uh anyway if you scroll and you could take a long time because wow, they keep there's adding a lot of questions a lot of answers yeah and, and so the 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 s the ecat sk lep is going to be like 250 bucks and i'm thinking well that seems kind of steep at first uh but it lasts for a hundred thousand hours. <laughs> well, I know. If if you take the time to look through this, I think it would probably answer most of your questions. And I think this is where it actually mentioned the Tesla thing somewhere down there. But uh, oh, wait, wait. It says, uh, does the SKLEP automatically turn itself on when power is required? The answer is yes. Yeah. Okay. So it. <clears throat> oh, oh, the, 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 it that, just keeps that's running. Little, that's the, 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 that, that's one of the questions that, that yeah. you and I had. Yeah. And it says if there's no, the controller basically if it says if there's no power, does it just idle? What it, it goes, well, it, it gets turned off. But the point is, once it's on, it's, you know. Uh, anyway, lots of questions here. And I, like I said, it's, it's one of the things where some people are going to say, I'm not going to spend any time looking at this because uh, it sounds wacky. But other people, I think, are going to pay attention. Now, one of the little things that's huh. also interesting. Wow, great questions and answers here. Oh, okay, yeah. There's um, a lot. Uh, there's what, an awful lot need to do is, is spend a couple hours just read through this well and uh the other thing we include rossi's blog if you look up above uh, our listing of topics up in the left hand corner is the rossi blog uh and that's always interesting because people will, will sometimes tell him hey you did a really lousy job why don't you get a real why don't you get a celebrity to do this and you know somebody that doesn't have speak with it and he, he's kind of i'm going to say in some ways he was a little gruff in the presentation mm -hmm. because he's putting it out here and it's kind of like for those who understand what's going on, this is enough. I don't yeah. have to do anything. Right. <clears throat> and it'll also I understand that. Also, as I said, I mentioned to some people, there's there's part of me that that wants to say, you know, keep this don't don't come out and stick it in anybody's face because some people if when they finally really understand what's going on here, uh, the ones who are really smart will say, Well, this is gonna help me no matter who I am. Yeah. Even if you're Exxon Mobil you're going to understand that you could adopt some of this technology and you could reduce the cost of your production enormously for things that people yep. are going to keep needing. Like people that mow their lawn with a gas lawnmower oh, are going to say... so ridiculous. Well, they're, well, but they're going to say, I still need my gasoline. And if it turns out that Rossi uh, can... You know, if Exxon uses this technology to make a cleaner fuel for me or something and cheaper, well, that's going to be good. So 
you know, but actually, if <coughs> you uh, if you're one, uh, one of those those people that needs to mow your lawn several times a day, like uh, I am, <laughs> yeah. some some you've been doing that lately. No. Oh no no no, no I certainly do not. But I uh, I know and no, they don't no have sheep do. or goats, right? Right, and they do not have sheep <coughs> sheep or goats. Um, you 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 might as well well f uh, uh, figure out how to how how to install one of these on a oh, yeah, lawnmower yeah. so that so that you can mow for the next 11 point well, obviously, four years uninterrupted obviously you could put one of these on a little a uh, little electric lawnmower like those black and decker things and and off you go and if it had a uh, sufficient battery power it would last you for oh my gosh who knows long yep. anyway so let's cl look at engineer 48 this comes engineer from 48. the rossi blog <clears throat> and within within that whole thing uh there's a way if you click on it i was able to just this is the link to just the one that, you know, I wanted to click on this uh -huh. particular one. Okay, so it was a guy who says, this is Engineer48, who's somebody that participates in the Rossi blog, and he posted this on December 10th. Uh, he said, if it is right about the SKLAP life being 100,000 hours, then everything changes. Because I'm thinking, he's talking about getting 10 units. Mm -hmm. Sure, $2,500 kilowatts up front. So that would be like 2500 uh, dollar. For 10 of these things. Yeah, for uh, he has 10 times 100. He says it's expensive. He's talking about up front. He said, but when factoring in kilowatt hours, it gets interesting. So he goes, 100,000 kilowatt hours for 2,500 is 0 0.25 kilo. It's like literally two and a half cents. Uh, <clears throat> all right. I'm a little confused here. Why is he having 10 of these things? Oh, he was talking, they were talking about like if you were, he, he's talking about, say, like to power your house. Oh, okay. Because here's right. his oh, last okay. sentence. He oh, goes, okay. look, gotcha, gotcha, and as gotcha. he says to Rossi, nothing on the planet could deliver 24-7 kilowatt hours to your home for 11 years. And he's talking about, mm -hmm. says he has 10 of at 2.5 cents per kilowatt, per kilowatt hour. hour. Nothing. Nothing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so nothing, the point would be. Oh, wait a minute. So, like, if I'm going to live in a house or I'm going to have run a garage or a place for, if I expect to be doing this for 11 years, right. once, I've, once I've spent $2,500, it's free it from go, it on. Right. I mean, after the initial, you know. Sure. Part. So, I just thought this was kind of an interesting. Uh, well, it, it, what, what it boils down to is, let's say that your, your electrical costs at your house were only five cents per kilowatt. And they're not. In fact, around here, I'm going to say in Europe it's even more, but let's, we're here like, a, yeah. we're at like 10 or 12 anyway, yeah. because we're in a state with coal and everything, it's yeah. cheap. We're so lucky we get and cheap electricity. And it's still four times more expensive. <clears throat> right, right. Yeah. Okay. So for whatever you would be doing, I mean, maybe you had an industrial process, maybe you, right. whatever it is, this guy is pointing out, yeah, it, it is, in some ways you feel like it's a little steep up front. And I would have to say that that uh, initially the concept that Rossi was looking at was like some kind of a home heating thing that would be three or four hundred dollars. Right. That would replace that you could put in the middle, say, splice into your if you had a hot water circulating hot water system mm -hmm. at your home, you would just splice it in and you turn it on and it would run for you know six months or a year and then you'd replace the fuel cartridge. So that was kind of the initial thing, and I will say that. They're looking at a lot of things. When I look at this, when I look at the, what they have done, what you're talking about is an object that's basically, well, since we're you know here in this part of the world, we won't talk the centimeters, but it's basically an inch by an inch by four inches. Right. It's yeah. tiny. It's that's all it is. It's tiny. The, it can fit in the palm of your hand. Yeah. And the the analogy I I mention to people is, hey, if you were to go buy one of those big Tesla power walls. What you'll find out when you take it apart, it's like multiple, multiple, multiple lithium ion batteries. You know, right. it's, it's a configuration of, so, but each one of those little batteries does not produce 100 watts. No. And so. And it certainly does not produce 100 watts for 100,000 hours. Yeah, and once you crank it up, it just keeps going. Right. So, so first of all, I want you to picture the fact that, okay, you could have something that's a, an inch on a side, four inches high, you know, like almost mm -hmm. sounds like a little, one of those little Bic lighters or yeah, something. Yeah, that's exactly what it About sounds like. that size. And they're saying that like with three or four or five of those, you could basically, and say like- How if, are your house? Well, or your house, or in the case of say like a, a Tesla vehicle that does have a battery, you know, cause you, you need a store. Mm -hmm. 
you would never catch up with your production of electricity was just having Ever. made three no. or four of those somewhere in the assembly. And if you got it into a situation where the power the, the power that was be, that was being produced was going to be no storage battery, but just you had enough continuous power just, to do it. Just raw. Yeah, yeah, just raw power. And, mm -hmm. and, and to, to give you a sense of it now, it, would, it sounds like it would be really expensive to do it if you're talking about these things being 250 exactly. bucks a piece. But they, they talked about the fact that you could produce a mega, megawatt, a million watts in a device that's a foot by a foot by four feet high. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you, got your, if you decided you had to order one of those big new Tesla cyber trucks, this would fit under your seat. So, so wait, 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 wait. Are, are, are we, we, are we to talk, are talk, are talking a foot by a foot by four feet, or are we talking a meter by a meter by four meters? Oh, I'm not sure. Let me think. Maybe you're right. It might have been the. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah, yeah. Me, a, me, a meters. Well, yeah. in any case, it also but is. Still, that's. We'll just cut it in half if you want. Yeah. The, if you don't want a whole megawatt, you just want 500,000 watts of any time instantaneous power. The amount that you need to run your car is actually way smaller. Way than smaller than that. But, but let's just assume for for like a, a, a sense of argument about, so what's going on here? If, if Rossi and Tesla were actually talking, they would actually know exactly how many of these units it would it would take to, so that with no battery vehicle ever with no battery wow, and the tes would... the tesla battery system is heavy yes as is any electric system so so that's another wonderful question i would love to know exactly if i needed all the power i would need to drive one of those like uh, maybe tesla semis or mm -hmm. you know a standard tesla car instantaneously anytime and their whole point is if you're not driving it and you don't need it it the the, the control it system off. just it's in off position so and of course it produces no heat and it produces so, no carbon so so dioxide. so so that means that it could that 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 if you were to have a have multiple of these units it could drive continuously for for 11 point, <laughs> 11 point point four four years. years but if you only needed it for an hour a day then it would never in your life a lifetime a run out. Yeah, probably not. And, it's, and it's, it's not clear exactly how they're talking about that, like whether not using it would extend the... I, I, I actually I get the feeling... so. I actually get the feeling that they, that other than the fact of uh, damage or that they, they have the sense that there's no, you know, they, they can't tell because this is something that... So... You can't say, well, we've tested it for an unlimited amount of time. Um, it hasn't happened well, yet. One of the, 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 the questions I'd like to, to see an answer to, and, I, and I've not seen it yet, is what what happens after it's used up oh well they and they can have you then yeah turn they have talked back about in? That. yeah they they, okay. they talk about can we just recycle and they say yeah okay. and they'll you know basically they'll just give you a whole new unit and there'll be a discount you know on the switchover i forget what it was so you mean we don't have to throw these things away no no because they want Aww. they want it all back you can't put it back into a a, 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 a landfill or uh, Throw a row it uh, into, oh, to, or just to throw it over the throw a, it in a, a neighbor's yard, dump it into the hollow. Like <laughs> okay, so let's. So anyway, this is there's a lot of stuff here, and we're going to be talking about more. Let's take a quick look at the Ragona chart. The Ragoni. And I only put this up because you and I talked about this to, for people to get a sense. Uh, when you click on this, you go, "Well, I, I, I'm not sure if I understand this completely," but. Uh, over in the left-hand corner of the Ragone plot, which is basically, this is a thing about power density, energy density, you know, and I don't want to get too deep in the weeds except right. to say everything over here is stuff that you've probably heard about. Like even look, super capacitors. Like for example, Tesla, they could have a super capacitor that would give you, you know, uh, that would that would hold a, a weeks or two days worth of stuff and you would never outrun your little ECATs recharging it. Or right. Anything. Anyway, over th everything in the lower left-hand corner it's kind of stuff that we know about, you know, gasoline, methanol, you know, all kinds of cool things like fuel Hydrogen cells. Hydrogen fuel cells. <clears throat> now, just to give you a, a thing of what we're talking about, it's it's kind of good to compare. Suppose, the, and again, these are the the results based on a bunch of people that you know. There's, I'm not just saying Rossi just made this up, but these are there are a lot of people who stand by these. This these data. Yeah. So now, um, 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 I know that in that in the the past when we've looked at this, but there might be some listeners that are listening in for the first time. If you look at this chart, I want you to look at the uh, axes. Um, 
if you lo look at the um, a horror of the um, um, horizontal axis, it says uh, energy, energy de density. A, de a density in 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 wa a watts per a, 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 kil a kilogram. Yeah, watt you'll, hours. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You'll notice. Yeah, thank you. You'll notice that this is a logarithmic chart, meaning it doesn't go one, two, three, four, five. It goes powers 10, of 10, yeah. 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. That's 10, 10 to the first, they left, left off the one. 10 to the second is 100, 10 to the third is 1,000, 10 to the fourth is 10,000, 10 to the fifth, on, on and on. And if you look at the, 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 the vertical chart, what's normally called the y-axis, that's the power d d d a density. This is watts per kilogram. <laughs> that's in the same thing. It's not, it's not a one, two, three, four, five, like right. we normally see a graph. This is a logarithmic graph again. It's a powers of 10, which means that, that if you were to do this in a, li a, li a, li a linear manner, yeah. as a normal graph, this thing would be gigantic. Yeah. And so to be able to fit, fit on your screen. Yeah, so to be able to fit <clears throat> all of this data on the, the screen, They've 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 taken a logarithmic graph for the x-axis, logarithmic graph for the y-axis to be able to reduce that down. So w when you look up at the top and you see this 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 this, this little green of of a five-sided dot, and it says uh, ECAP March 2014. It's not you know five times or ten times better than than a fly, a flywheel yeah. or, or, or something. It's hundreds of thousands of times. Yeah, we're, we're in the 10 to the ninth. Yeah, uh, it's, it's millions of times. Um, and, and it's, it's the, uh, this is why- It's when, a mind blowing chart when, if you when, get what we're looking when, at. When we were looking at, at when, when we were talking about this at, 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 at the very beginning, when I see this chart, it literally blows my mind every single time. I'm going, how can this possibly be? And the answer is because you're doing something brand new. Yeah. This is brand new. This is not the usual thing that, right. that, that everybody talks about. Anyway, yeah. there's a lot here, and it can be daunting to look at. Yes. But this, is a, this will be an important chart. The kind of big overall thing that, is, that should just really is you look at the, the, green, you know, the green thing that's the ECAT, uh, the March 2014 test, and this is based on using an active mass of one gram, and they're, they're giving all the stuff. Uh, the only thing that is even even close in the neighborhood is you go, oh, and it doesn't even have the power density. No. You know, it surpasses the uh, thing in energy density, but we're looking at plutonium-238. Plutonium. And you know, Robert, when people use that... It's bad. bad things it's happen. bad things happen. Yeah. Bad things could happen. Don't do it. Okay, so that's the chart. I, 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 I'm going to say that... Uh, that's other than the, I was I was thinking this morning, Robert. We were, one of the things we like to do is I was thinking of all the crazy simple things you could do with something like this, like uh, you know, like you could you could use this with other systems. Like uh, obviously, if you if you're going to power any ion engines, yeah, of this would be so good, obviously, yeah, because you know you'd you'd have 11.4 years or so to get to wherever you wanted to go with your ion engines, right? Yep. That's an amazing thing. I was thinking of the fact that, you know, a lot of time, a lot of times people think, again, we get into that like, well, you can't get into something for nothing. Well, well you're not getting something well, for and nothing. You, and you're not. And it's being used somehow. Like one of the things I've often pointed out to people is that steam power was an amazing magical thing when people started right. using it. And it, it, both directions of steam power, like when you, if you had something, and I'm saying, so let's imagine that you had some situation where you had a lot of water that was at 99.9 .9 degrees. And you just kept it there at that right. temperature, by wow. just adding, by just adding, getting that water to to 100. go through to one hundred and have it, it go from begin, a liquid it, to a. It suddenly turns into steam and it expands and it can push enormous a, a, a pistons and make make things work. And then the other yep. thing that's even more enormous is if if you have a system where you have a. Let's say you have a large cylinder, a room, or a cylinder. Mm -hmm. Let's say you have a large cylinder and it's completely open. It, you don't even have to use anything much, in fact, nothing beyond actual atmospheric pressure to completely fill it with steam at 100 degrees plus mm -hmm. and then let it cool to 99. The energy that comes from the compression 
Yeah. The recompression of, right. is even astonishingly more. In fact, yeah. that's so. Anyway, I was looking at why couldn't you have some kind of a, you could revert to some all kinds of interesting steam systems where you'd have some ECATs that basically kept a reservoir of water available to you at at 99.9, .9, and then you'd have an electrical system that would uh, that would power your little microwave wow. to kick it over and turn it into steam that yep. would do work for you. Wow, uh, there's some great ideas. Well, and we were, and I was thinking about the, one of the things about the LED light is that it's it's a broad spectrum. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody said, well, you know, if you made that into a, just a pure spectrum for plant growth, yeah, wouldn't that be amazing? Then just look at look at the astonishing thing you could do with greenhouses, uh, or a win a winning for a hour hours a day or in the age of covid if you just wanted to have a simple system where the entire uh hva system in your school or hospital would go through a zone with intense uv whether exactly. your air and water would be you know there there would be nothing that would survive it in terms of the vet you know absolutely purified well and then the other one i thought would be really wow. su suppose you suppose you would want to do hydrogen fuel how are you going to store it well, you could store, uh, you could use the ECAT electricity for a hydrolytic splitting of water, yep. and then you could just uh, separate the hydrogen and oxygen, or you could even let them mix because that's an explosive, powerful gas to do work for you. There are so many there's things. so much you could do here. And, this and lot is of, amazing. And a lot of times people think about this, there's a time shifting thing. Yeah. And I, I was, the first thing I was thinking about was uh, I watched a great thing about trebuchets. Are you familiar with the trebuchet? Yes. Well, the idea was that. How did they launch these giant? They would launch cows into the cities. They would they would have like hundred kilograms. You know they had huge stones, and that's it became the thing that it was like the nuclear device of the right. the medieval times. And one of the systems, you know, what it is, you had this heavy thing where you had to fill it up with dirt or rocks, and then you released it. And one of the one of the things that somebody proposed was, you know, if you were able to do it, you could have a trebuchet system. And this is why I'm saying it. It's time shifting on how you do stuff. Like when people have those little cattle zappers and they have mm -hmm. a, a capacitor that builds up with right. a one little battery and it knocks you flat. Uh, you could have a, a trebuchet could have a system where you you have this whole big empty thing and it's lightweight and balanced and you just pull it up to where the stream fills it with water and you hook it so it can't move. And after it's filled up with a 20 tons of water. You release the thing, and the trebuchet launches a you know 100 kilogram right. rock into the castle, and go. the water goes out, and you do it again. You didn't. It's not and like you, you you aren't using any energy right compared to what is being released. Yeah, and yes. so it becomes one of those things where people get you know concerned. Oh, is this real or is this false? We're doing. How's that good? All right. Got a couple more minutes. Okay. Okay. So those are all. Those are probably more things than many of you wanted to hear about the. ECAD. But you know what. This is going to be important. You heard it here on <laughs> ra a Radio Science News. And pretty much nowhere it will else. Be, right. It will be nowhere else. Well, so please pay some attention to this because it could turn into something well, truly amazing. The thing is, if we take people at their word, and we yes. all, we actually are, we, never do. We do. We try. We but, should. But the, the point of it is, there's a lot of scrutiny by a lot of people of this, and a lot of people involved, and a lot of some behind the scenes big companies involved in this and if nothing else is going on here you at december 9th 2021 somebody you know kind of like the guy that was going to invent uh, warp speed on mm -hmm. star trek came out with this concept that said you know i'm going to take it way down i'm going to i'm going to trim it way back in terms of my coefficient of performance because i could probably do a thousand Right. But I just want to have an easily controllable right. device that people might want to buy. And that's that's an absolutely astonishing, astonishing thing. Yes, Even if is. we don't we don't seem to realize it right now. And I'm going to get ready to start the old. Uh, OK. You know, Robert, we had some great stories here. OK, so we <laughs> we, we we are just going to have to take them to n n n uh, next All right. week. Where, where we'll Even talk the about grape seed, the, the infant. <laughs> COVID, the nasal vaccine, the six quarks, the grape seed, the TT10, the Ifisil C, and the transplant. There are so many. I'll tell you I what, know. I'm going to, I might even start the theme early just because I want to, no, I'll give it a second. Uh, we may look at one. Let's okay, look at okay. the, uh, let's look at the nasal vaccine because. Nasal vaccine. 
And I didn't say navel vaccine. No, a lot of people. A lot of people said it's bad enough in the arm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wow. Nasal vaccine may fight, may aid fight against new viral variants. Yes, it's, which is a great idea. Well, and this is certainly an idea that uh, that let me turn that down the hair. This is certainly an idea that was uh, was thought about by many people who are looking at skin patch vaccines, yep. uh, pa vaccines that you could actually take in the form of a food or a pill. Uh, even the folks at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center were saying, you know, you could you could inhale this. The neat thing about this story is that this is actually the most efficacious place because anything you do in your, navel, your nasal mucous membranes alerts your lungs first. Yeah, great and idea. It, and, and unlike, and they make a whole point of that, unlike anything else going on in, in this thing.